Back on Inside Tennessee with two people who would like to be a member of Knoxville City Council. The at-large B seat is up. Janet Testerman and David Hayes with us this morning. Dennis? A lot of conversation about rezoning in the city of Knoxville, uh, whatever the buzzword. Recode. Recode. David, what do you think about that? What is it good, bad, or otherwise? Mm -hmm. So my slogan, my tagline, uh, everything my campaign really stands for is about Knoxville for all. And like I said earlier, about democracy being really important to me. So if anything that affects your community, you should have a say in it. Um, the RECO process hasn't been as democratic as I think it should be. Um, we've heard that we've had 90 community meetings, for instance. I can go around most communities in Knoxville and ask them if they've been to a meeting, if they submitted any comments that they know about how their zone is being changed, and they won't know. Um, so I think in Knoxville, we need to strive better so when we make these decisions that people are involved. So personally, I am, I am not supportive of it, and I won't be supportive of it until I feel and see that communities have a real voice in how their neighborhoods are changing. Yeah. You know, I've sat in neighborhood associations where you know they are vehemently against it, and then there's some that are like, "This works for us." You know, the one message that I have is people have got to get involved in their neighborhood associations. It's critical if they really want to be a part, they want to be engaged, they want to make decisions. And here's the thing: I'm encouraged that council has slowed down. They're going through it line by line. Um, they're listening to constituents, as with any working, living, breathing document. Um, there are pros and cons, and there are certainly concerns, um, but, but I do think, you know, there, there's a lot of dialogue out there, and I'm encouraged by that. And I just hope at the end of the day, whether it, it should it pass, that, that council now and future council is mindful that, that it is an evolving, um, again, it's an evolving process, and as our city involves, that recode and whatever shape or form also continues to evolve with our city and the needs of our city. Do you think, just following up on that, do you think that we should, that council should put this off until the new mayor is elected and the new council? You know, right now, I feel like, you know, it has been a three-year process. There have been over, you know, 90 community Please. forums. And again, people need, have a choice to get engaged. And I wish more people would get engaged. Um, you know, at what point is it, is it going to be okay? I don't know. And again, I go back to council. I feel like they're doing the right thing by slowing it down. Um, but I also feel like you have council members that people have elected and you know hopefully we entrust those people to be decision makers on our behalf because I know they're out there they're listening and they're looking at the issues and concerns that people have. Uh, David and Janet the leadership let's talk about the leadership that we have had with council and with the mayor's office. Um, I'm curious as to whether you think we've had good solid leadership or if we really need some wholesale leadership. David let me start with you. Um, so one thing about Knoxville for All is that we want to transform this city. Saying the way the city has been working, the status quo, isn't actually enough. Um, so just the expectation of a few thousand people vote for um, some representatives and they make all the decisions for us, um, we're saying that's not enough. Um, so it's, it's, it's about who is in leadership, but it's also about the democratic processes. And so in giving people more avenues to participate in, in decisions that control their lives, whether it be in the budget, whether it be in development, um, or whether it be in city operations. Um, so yes, it's in, I, we can talk about different leadership, but until we make those structural changes, uh, I believe we won't see the changes that, and transformation that um, so many communities in Knoxville need. Janet. So I go back. Between the Haslam administration and the Rohir administration, our city has made tremendous strides over the last 16 years. And so I'm, I think we've got great momentum, and I hope that we can continue that momentum. But I go back to there are a lot of new visions that are coming to the table. And so I'm really about, you know, let's discuss the future of our city. Um, there's a lot of, there are a lot of feasibility studies, you know, micro plans going on across our city within two and five mile radiuses of downtown. How do we look at those and ensure that they're sustainable five, 10, 20 years from now and ensure that, you know, our city is really staged for, you know, long-term growth and sustainability. Janet and David, that's all the time we have for this morning. We hope to have you back before the November regular election. Again, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Best of luck in the August primary, and we will be back with more of our conversation about a changing city council right after this.